Once we have our frequency distribution table, one of the things that we can do in terms of getting the information off of the table and onto a graph is to use this information to draw a histogram. Now with a histogram, we want the bars to be equally widthed and they need to touch. So what I've recreated from the frequency distribution table of the previous video clip about frequency distribution tables is the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary for each of the classes of the data set that were in the first two videos about making a frequency distribution table. So we're just going ahead with that same data set, taking the information we had from the frequency distribution table, and then drawing a histogram using that information. Now with a histogram, we want the frequencies to be labeled along the vertical axis, and we want the data value spans along the horizontal axis. You can either mark the beginning and the ends of the bars that you're going to create with the lower class limit and the upper class limit, or you can mark the middle of each bar that you make with the class midpoint. But you still want to think of that as a number line along the x-axis. Now when I look at my values that I have for my lower class boundaries and my upper class boundaries, 14.5, remember, was the lower class boundary of the first class, and it's going to go up to 49.5. So since I want to represent the histogram close to the vertical axis so they can refer to it for the frequencies, but 14.5 is going to be like the beginning of my first bar, I'm going to show that there's a change in the normal scaling by putting a little mark in the beginning of that horizontal axis. And what I'm going to do in drawing the histogram for this example is I'm going to use two grid spaces for each bar so that I have a slot to put my midpoint labeling in along the horizontal axis. So think of starting your first bar here and then going two over to end your first class. So that'd be like the span of my first class of x values. And then the second class we want the same width. And the third class the same width again fourth class, and fifth class. And I'm going to label the midpoints halfway between the beginning and the end of the bar with the midpoint we have for each class. So I have also written down the midpoints from that previous video clip. The first class midpoint is 18. So right halfway between where I'm going to do this bar, I'm going to write the number 18 down um, as a label along the horizontal axis. The next class midpoint is 25, the third class midpoint is 32, and the fourth class midpoint is 39, and then the fifth class midpoint is 46. So we've just labeled that along the edge. We didn't have any actual application that those numbers went to, but if it were like hours of study for an exam or something, then that's what you would label along the horizontal axis, what it meant. Now along the vertical axis, we are going to use the frequencies. So we'll just use the first letter of the word frequency, so F, as my label for my vertical axis. Now for graphing the histogram then, we're going to go ahead and do the height of our bar above each class to be the frequency that we found for that class. So for our first class, our frequency was 7. So I'm going to take and look at the spans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for a height. And then make my bar from the beginning to the end of that first class. So here is your graph of the frequency of the data values that fell in that first class. For the second class, our frequency was 3. So we'll go a height of 3 for the second class. For the third class, our frequency was 2. We'll have a height of 2 for the third class. For the fourth class, our frequency was 5. So we have a height of 5 for our fourth class. And then our fifth class, we have a height of 1. And here is a histogram of the data values we had in that first video clip.